Warning. The following information could be found offensive or controversial to some audiences. We release this video based on facts and the rules set by the Drug Enforcement Administration alone and hold no personal or public opinion on the subjects discussed in this video. The world of medicine is a very strange place, filled with rules and regulations that have been long outdated. Even today, because of personal bias, there are still Schedule 1 drugs in America that have proven to fit not a single one of the criteria released by the DEA to be put on that list. This week on Future 5, we're going to talk about some of these medicines and some more that haven't yet even been made. Number 1. Silesibin We started with this drug because it's by far the most absurd to be on the list. These are a few requirements to make the list of Schedule 1 drugs, none of which this medicine comes close to covering. Number 1. The number one requirement, the drug has no accepted medical value. Psilocybin is the active ingredient found in magic mushrooms. Magic mushrooms have been used in medical science since 2002 for treatment of migraines, depression, acceptation of death and ironically to treat addiction. Although this substance has shown huge success in the medical field, the research is very limited and you are required to have special license in order to even test with it. The number two requirement is a high potential for abuse or the chemical is extremely addictive. Celesibin mushrooms make it impossible for your body to get addicted to the source and actually cure addiction of other more harmful drugs in many cases. The third and possibly most ridiculous is that they are extremely dangerous and can harm your body. Mushrooms are one of the least harmful substances known to man and you'd have to consume nearly your entire body weight in order to overdose. The same amount of cheese pizza you would have to eat to overdose. Only now that Horton syndrome is becoming possible to study are they deciding to reschedule mushrooms. But this could take years, if not decades. Number 2. Cannabis aka marijuana aka Mary Jane aka ganja aka weed aka herbs aka <laughs> I'm Dutch, come on. This doesn't have to be covered very much. This is the largest piece of text in this script. Cannabis is already being taken down from Schedule 1 as we speak and is going full throttle into the medical field if everything rolls the right direction. In America, many states have already legalized cannabis for both medical and recreational use due to its safe nature when compared to harmful substances like alcohol and tobacco. Cannabis has a lot of false information out there covering what it does for the body, but we can hopefully clear things up. The information based around cannabis is limited the same as every other drug we talk about on this list. Multiple scientific studies have showed cannabis does wonders for the body, and if it wasn't for the smoking part of it, then it is a vital resource for good health and well-being. In a young person without a fully developed brain under the age of 21, Cannabis can do damage to your health, it can lead to possible short-term memory and bring forth mental disorders that may have been laying dormant in young persons. In a full-grown adult, however, the opposite is true. Cannabinoids help your brain produce more brain cells, which is a rare occurrence for chemicals to stimulate, without consequence. One of the most overblown studies that has gotten a lot of false media is that cannabis can actually kill cancer. This shouldn't be taken by its cover. The study was done on mice with human brain tumors and researchers were only able to greatly reduce the size of the tumors while on the bodies and didn't do enough research to prove it could completely destroy the tumor. Another study that was done in a controlled environment and researchers used tetrahydrocannabinol, the psychoactive ingredient in cannabis, straight onto tumor cells which was able to destroy them without a trace. Cannabis has not been found to fight all cancers and just smoking it will not rid you of cancer like some people try to claim. There are true medical values in this drug, but without true research and the end to prohibition, we'll never know if it's true science. Number 3. PRL-853 PRL-853 is a synthetic nootropic compound discovered all the way back in 1972 
and later patented in 1975. Neurotropic compounds are compounds that are known to affect the brain in a multitude of ways that improve cognition and includes things such as Alzheimer's drugs, Adderall, Ritalin and Resetams. The study on PRL was done in 1978 and performed on 30 individuals between the ages of 24 and 86 and the success was overwhelming. Each person was administered a 5 mg dose of the drug and from that, after a 24 hour period, the average retention rate seemed to go up by an average of 108% for patients above the age of 30. After one week on the drug, the average retention rate of words increased to 152% and continued from that point. So far this has been noted to be the most powerful nootropic on the market and is compared to drugs such as nefiracetam and neuropep. The exact way PRL-853 works is not understood, which is similar to most nootropics and brain-boosting drugs. We know very little about brain chemistry, and it's really a matter of trial and error. One theory that's widely accepted among nootropics is that it ups the amount of dopamine in older subjects, who already have lower levels. It can have a significant impact on both learning and the memory itself. Number 4. LSD This one won't have a lot of information, because we already covered a lot of the scientific research backing it up with psilocybin. LSD is a drug derived from a fungus, and is psychoactive and considered Schedule 1 by the DEA, with no medical benefits and with a high potential of abuse. However, LSD has extremely similar effects as the mushrooms, and is found to cause less anxiety and be less likely to cause a mental breakdown than the psilocybin. LSD is impossible to get addicted to, as your body will not allow it, and can be used for the same medical conditions as magic mushroom. It's been proven to stop cluster headache cycles, treat migraines, cure depression, and possibly cure addictions the same as mushrooms. LSD has been used by the CIA for many reasons in history, and has been tested extensively, although off the books. Although the lethal dose of LSD is extremely high, the possibility of bringing out a mental disorder or causing suicide among individual users is still possible. Number 5. Genetically based drugs For those of you in pain management, you know this is just starting to become a thing. Just now we're starting to understand the link within genetics and pain as well as medical care and certain genetic code. Soon there will be a race for which codes can be deciphered to create the best possible treatments for your person whether that be for pain, memory, diabetes or something else. Genetic code is more understood every day and we are finding more and more links to create new drugs to help us fight off disease and make ourselves more suitable to this dangerous and unforgiving world. Genetic based medicine is already a thing, but we believe everyone will soon have medicine that will be genetically based on their body and medical practitioners will no longer have to practice medicine it will finally become a true science based on an individual's needs. Thank you for watching. Hopefully we have been able to clear a few things up for you on this controversial topic. But do ask any questions if you have them, either in the comments or on our social media. Links in the description.